this girl, Saki, in Okayama. Thanks so much for joining, Saki. Thanks for having me. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. So before we start, uh, as people are joining, maybe I can tell you a little bit about other people that I've talked to in Okayama before you. So we have in the talk Seeking Sustainability live talk show series, we talked with Kyle, who is doing Kamimomi Permaculture Center. And uh, they are growing vegetables. They are doing workshops. He's a plastering artist. And that was really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I've talked to Robert Yellen. He's in Kyoto. He is a pottery and ceramic expert. He has a beautiful studio in Kyoto. So when I talked to him, we talked about Bizen. Have you been to Bizen? Ah, yes, yes, yes. We are famous for Bizen Yaki, Japanese. Right. You know, pottery. And yeah. I love the town of Bizen. It's such a beautiful old classic town. I would love to meet you there and walk yeah. around together. We should have kimonos on, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah, <laughs> I would be happy to show you around. <laughs> and then right, right next to uh, Okayama train station, there is a fantastic vegan bakery called Tere Koko, and it's run by this lady Teresa, and oh. uh, she makes the most amazing uh, pastries and cakes and everything. And uh, yeah, so have you been there? You should go and check out Teresa's bakery. No, I haven't been there, but I should check it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I see my friends joining. Oh, hi, Mike. Hi, Scott. Hi, Dario. Uh, Andy. Hi. <laughs> yeah, we're going to start talking uh, with Saki about her experience in a minute. I got one more person I want to shout out. Uh, John sure. Spullenmeyer. He is a carpenter in Okayama. And uh, he has a love for building in traditional Japanese style. And we had a great talk with him. He's also going to join the series again next week. He's remodeling an old house. Wow. So yeah, just to give a shout out to the other Okayama people so far. Uh, <laughs> that's so cool. There are so many great people from here, Okayama. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And we are right next to each other, right? Like, right. I'm we are neighbors. Man. You're in Okayama. You have also shared some beautiful photos of Okayama Castle, probably uh, the most you. famous site, right? Yeah, exactly. These are the Okayama Castle. They are going under construction, so they're gonna yeah remodel again. But uh, th these are the beautiful <laughs> pictures of mine. So <laughs> it's like a black castle, you know, like compared to the Himeji one. That's a white. So in the contrast. We have the black one, so we call it like uh, Ujo. Yeah, yeah, it's it's like a crow. Yeah, crow castle. Yeah, it's like a nickname for Okayama Castle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's great to see all of your uh, fans joining today. Welcome everybody. Uh, any donations or awards? We're gonna split fifty fifty, me and Saki, like I do with all my guests. So feel free to donate away if you like what you hear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you, people. Give me some donation. <laughs> Donate to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Saki, you have had such an interesting history. Oh, there's one more person I want to shout out before we start. Uh, he's a filmmaker in Okayama. He has a really popular YouTube channel called Q2. Uh, mm -hmm. Bobby Kuto. Do you know him? No, I don't know him. I don't know Okayama people, really. I, I, I For the first time, I, I heard him. Yeah. <laughs> It's so it's so typical, right? Like when I'm originally from Hawaii, when I took students to Hawaii, ah. um, they found things about my hometown that I didn't know about, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, I think that's so true, right? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know much about Okayama until I started to share, and people ask me like, "Oh, what is what's what's there in Okayama?" And I can't say like, "Oh, Momotaro, you know, Kibidango, you know, Peach Story." These are the things that people already know. So I'm like, okay, I don't know much about Okayama. I have to research. <laughs> okay, well, what what I love about Okayama, which I would love to explore again with you, maybe I can meet up with you next time. 
I love For sure, Kojima. Yeah. Kojima is the <gasps> jeans. Jeans. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And exactly. Okayama jeans are famous all over the world. It's a yeah, yeah, yeah. That you're making jeans there in Okayama. Yes, Okayama is like the first place that imported, like, uh, no, not imported, they started to make their own jeans the first place in Japan. So I don't know if people know it, but there are like jean streets and, you know, there are many uh, jeans factories and uh, there are many professionals that are like so passionate about making jeans uh, with Japanese quality. So I hear like many like uh, pe 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 people from like abroad wanted to yeah buy the, the jeans from here. Yeah, yeah, because of the and you you have some famous brands. Probably the most famous brand is Momotaro. Momotaro. Yeah, 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 Boy, yeah. They have also a shop in Okayama Station Boy, now. Which yeah, is yeah, a yeah. famous story that you're talking about, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Momotaro jeans, yes. It's a good, great, good brand, and they make, I think all handmade. Yeah, yeah. So the quality is amazing, and you can wear like whole time. I think yeah. the last for long. Yeah. I, I love Momotaro jeans, but I think as a Western person, yeah. as a Western woman in particular, it's very hard to find the right jeans to fit ah. Momotaro because all the sizes are very for people who have a straight figure, should I say? Uh, <laughs> Someone with a curvy figure, it's very hard to fit those jeans. <laughs> Um, but if you, you know, if you're tall and thin, you're probably okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm also short, so I don't know, like always the jeans that are so, being sold, you know, in the stores are too too long. So I have oh. to always like pick well, I, I love some of the other shops too. It's not only Momotaro jeans, which is popular there. Uh, Pilot Mike says Levi's of Japan. That's so true. <laughs> and Andy, thank you for the super heart. Yeah, Andy, thank you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, Hi, so Andy, tell us about uh, you. How did you uh, get started with language teaching? So actually, I started like to be blogging about Japan when I go uh, when I started, I guess, a Periscope. Uh, which is like, you know, gone now, but basically it's like Twitter Live now. Uh, but at that time, I was only looking to kind of, you know, to find friends or whatever. <laughs> and I didn't have any in intentions to share Japan. But uh, because I said, like, I'm from Japan and people say like, oh, you know, they, they, they are very interested in Japan. And uh, me as a Japanese person, so many questions, culture related questions, like, you know, like about the shrines or temples or our like habits, traditions and everything. And I realized I don't know much about it. So I started to research and I tried to answer the questions. And then I started to be very interested in my culture, uh, like so many interesting stories and history and something that, uh, you know, very, very beautiful about. And uh, that became my passion very naturally. And then I also started to teach on Periscope the Japanese language because the culture and the language are so uh, related to each other. And also uh, I found the beauty in the language itself. So now, yeah, I'm blogging, but also I'm a Japanese Twitter and I'm still learning the my own language because, you know, <laughs> I speak without any thinking anything so uh, i have to research that and my students also like ask me the questions i don't know so uh i research a lot then i also find so many cultural stuff that's like so unique about like japan even in the language itself very nature related to yeah languages so i, I have to give a shout out to dario thank you so much for the super heart that's very kind of you. And uh, people saying they're watching from Periscope. So even though we can't maybe start from Periscope, with HAPS, you are able to broadcast to Periscope. So you can still keep your followers, which is a great thing, right? Right. Yeah, I didn't know that. Like when Periscope is gone, I didn't know how it would work. But I'm glad, <laughs> Scott, you could join me. <laughs> uh, Dario, awesome. thank you. Thank you. Now you are a multilingual. Uh, you were in Europe studying German. 
Right. And, uh, <laughs> tell me about your experience in Germany because I love the fact that you were wearing kimono in <laughs> Europe. Oh, yeah, actually, God. Germany is not the first place that I uh, where I wore kimono abroad. It was in Italy for the first time, uh, but it was only traveling and uh, kind of like it's. Uh, I didn't plan to wear like in Italy, like so specifically. But um, I, I at that time I was very passionate about my culture, and I started to share my you know uh knowledge uh on periscope so i was like you know uh kimono i was like oh kimono that's the beauty so why not i learn also kimono and then uh, i didn't know how to put the kimono on myself and the only experience i've got um uh, with kimono uh, like only the celebration such as a like, coming in ceremony or even shichigo san like when i was like seven years old so i was like uh, i have to relearn again <laughs> so what i did was like i signed up on the kimono course and uh to wear and then i started to think oh that would be cool if i could wear kimono abroad and uh yeah first you know the thing that i thought is like oh Let's just uh, travel, maybe in Italy or in Europe, and then <laughs> wear kimono, and uh, that would be so cool to connect the cultures together. Then later on, like I met my my current like boyfriend who is from Germany, so that's what that's why I kind of you know went to Germany back and forth, and I lived there, and I started to learn German to communicate with him and his family, and. Uh, I wore so many times. Uh, I wore kimono so many times in Germany, <laughs> and met like so many amazing friends. And you know, I showed them like uh, kimono in person, and they were amazed. And uh, also, people reacted so positively when I was wearing kimono and walked around. And also, the people's reactions were different in uh, each country, and that was also very interesting. <laughs> like in Italy, people were like hello, you know, in Japanese and uh, konnichiwa or random. Japanese was like Tokyo, Osaka, or whatever, but that was very friendly. But in Germany, people are more like reserved, so people really respect uh, my fashion. But some people are really nice to me and say like, you know, you look, you look great and beautiful. <laughs> so it's a, it was a very nice experience. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, and one of the photos that we're showing is with your language school friends. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yes, yes. I, I went to the language school in Germany and I, I said, like, you know, I, I will show you my culture. Then they, they come to me <laughs> and I I showed them the kimono and they were very, yeah, uh, happy about it. And we went to the Japanese restaurant and I explained the Japanese culture to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also kimono. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, you have some great advice for if you're renting kimono, uh, which I really appreciated. I think for a lot of people coming to Japan, they want to rent kimono. And you had some great advice um, on your blog about don't bring too much baggage. Uh, right. Could you, can you tell us some of your advice? If yeah, people. yeah, like you said, uh, don't bring too much because when you go around a shop, a kimono shop, then they tell you, like, this is your bag. I guess when depends on maybe which uh, uh, kimono course or I don't know what they offer, but usually you get only the small bag uh, to bring. So you have to leave either leave it uh, to shop or something. And then, yeah, and also the wearing kimono is kind of like not long process but you have to go to make sure to the, go to the toilet before i guess they ask you to like you know are you okay like you, you want to go to the toilet but even if you wear kimono you can also go to the toilet that's uh, one of the most asked questions <laughs> like how to go to uh, you know toilet when, when <laughs> and, uh, i've i've rented kimono it takes so long to put on uh, um, but <laughs> but recently one of the good points the kimono rental shop suggested is i had like um you know like stretchy clothes underneath like like exercise leggings ah so having nice. that underneath especially when it's a bit cold outside that was really yeah. helpful ah that's and cool then, yeah of course going to the toilet is difficult but if you have to go to the toilet hopefully you can be around people who will help you fix yeah. it 
because definitely after the toilet you're gonna need some adjusting right yes 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 it, it gets a bit messed i mean like loose kind of like loses but uh, uh yeah, yeah like i said also on the blog which i shared like uh, not blog but i you know i wrote an article um and then they're there like i said like japanese people are happy to help you if you need help so don't don't hesitate to i don't know ask for help if you need and uh, people can yeah adjust it <laughs> after toilet <laughs> now one of the styles i have seen a lot but i've never tried wearing myself is hakama style can you explain uh, how hakama is different from traditional kimono yeah yeah, yeah. hakama is like uh, e easy to easy to move yeah uh so it's actually uh originally men used to wear hakama more and that was not as common for women um but after i guess taisho era like um when it became a modern times then people women started to be more active outside as well so that was also a good way for women to you know wear this to move easier it's like i don't know if you can see it but underneath it's like a pants not like skirt so it's, it's easier to like, walk kind of like kulats I think uh, in America, people know culottes. It's uh, like a, a pants skirt combo, right? Ah, uh, yeah, 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 like this. Yeah, if you see from, you know, outside, it's, yeah, it's not uh, like, like pants, straight pants, but looks like a skirt as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. And quite exactly. often it's used by academics, right? Like university students will often choose this style for the graduation party. For yeah, 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 like this, yes, yes. Hakama is like, yeah, doesn't have to be academic uh, scenes, but now it's like a trend when they graduate yeah, from universities, then they wear. But you can also wear without Hakama, just kimono. Hakama is basically you wear kimono, but with this, you know, pants. So you don't have to wear this, but some people do only wear kimono without Hakama. The, yeah. this part yes yes it's, I, it's up I to wish, their choices i wish they would recommend hakama more for yeah. inbound tourism because i think it's a lot more comfortable uh, yeah. not as tight because <laughs> you don't have the big ob system right yeah the trousers instead it's a lot easier to walk it's not as tight and you can wear different kinds of shoes so for example you can wear like a traditional or retro style boot looks mm, really nice yeah, there's yes that. sometimes geta is very difficult to walk in right using the the toe socks is kind of difficult right yeah yeah it's, it's not my as comfortable big, yeah. so <laughs> having geta in my size is often difficult right um, so yeah some of the things you, you talked about like take small steps um, yeah, yeah, you can't even so like much if it's make Hakama, big right? steps. Yeah, yeah, you, you can't make big, big steps because you know uh, it's tight. It's too tight. But you, you can walk. How to say? It's like not like uh, manly. You know that's why may, maybe men like it. You know used to like it when in the past women behave very feminine with this wearing kimono and uh, walk very like small with small steps and you know traditionally weak uh behind three steps you know uh, from men so i think that has to do with like this culture also yeah maybe yeah, yeah. but people can behave very not, not how to say like uh, well educated when wearing kimono because you have the long like sleeves and you have to be careful when you move so people like you know behave very nice like without uh thinking much <laughs> yeah. Yeah. well i i love to see um like if you are doing tea ceremony a lot of the gesture is to move the kimono yes and do right yes so often if you are renting kimono and then if you do tea ceremony you can learn some good techniques for how to move in kimono right yes yes for sure yes tea ceremony is uh i would say it's one of the strict like um japanese traditions like when you want to learn the tea ceremony they teach a lot of about manners and how to move of course like how to wear even like kimono i think there are many different 
different uh, kimono that that are appropriate for each uh, different tea, tea ceremony scenes and uh, I, I'm sure like you learn a lot from that from them like I, I yeah. think my aunt my aunt and my uh, also my relatives uh, are like well used to be a tea ceremony teacher yeah so she know, she knows a lot yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And you, you wrote a really interesting uh, article for a travel guide, online travel guide, about is it okay for foreigners to wear kimono? Can you talk about that a little bit? I thought that was really interesting. Ah, uh, yes. And also I, I wrote an article about it. So it's like kind of, I don't want to spoil the <laughs> the content of the my article, but instead I want people to read it. But basically, um, it's it's not rude it's not rude uh but the i also have a mixed feelings about uh also you no know, for non-japanese people uh wearing kimono but at the same time i learned a lot uh about this um how to say foreigners perspective when they were wearing kimono like you can be insecure about how japanese people would think about and uh i in germany i kind of understood this, their perspective as well, but I also have this mindset where oh, I want to preserve my culture in the right way, or I want people to respect our culture. So it, I, it's both ways. I, I like people wearing kimono, so, but in general, yes, as yeah. long as you learn the culture better, then it's totally okay. You know, you, you, well, you can't be so, yeah. I agree with you. And I, I read the article and I think we can hint at what you were talking about. And then people, please go and read the article. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But your whole concept of it's not disrespectful to wear kimono, but if you choose to wear kimono a different way, yeah Maybe understand the style that you're using and try to make a choice not mistake right yeah, uh, yeah. Try to keep some of the traditions but of course you can do your own way but as long as you understand the choices that you're making right yes yes it's it's about how you wear and how much you know the culture like kimono or how you observe the Japanese people, how Japanese people wear kimono. And yeah, maybe you learn a lot. Uh, when you learn the culture, for me, it's totally fine if you wear the kimono and you, you decide to respect our culture, then I, I can, yeah, I'd be happy about. And I, I, I'm actually generally happy when non-Japanese people enjoy my culture and that way we can get to know each other we can connect and in Germany also I got to know these people because of the kimono our you know common interest and they also love Japan of course so they are interested in like my culture and that fact makes me so happy as a blogger also sharing the culture. <laughs> well, that's yeah. great. I talked to another lady, she's in America now. Uh, she's on Instagram and Facebook as well. Her tag is Sun Shower Kimono. Uh, if you want ah, yeah, her. I know her. Yeah, I, I've watched her, yes, yes, yes. And she is so she passionate about yeah. Kimono and she's living in California. Oh. And um, she had a really good point, I thought. she's She studied kimono formally as well. She often goes to Comic-Con, you know, like yeah. the comic and anime manga fan event. And she will teach at Comic-Con how to wear kimono. And she was talking about if you are a cosplayer or if you are uh, trying to look dead, then of course you would do a different style than the traditional style, right? That's part, that's part of what you're trying to do. But of course, if you know the traditional style and you choose to do different, that's different from just doing different and you don't know, right? Exactly. Yes, yes. That's why I say like, you know, the culture, getting to know, know the culture before you, you introduce, in, incorporate the cult, you know, the different culture into your fashion or something. And also I'm, what I'm trying to do is give the culture, not culture knowledge to 
the word so that people、uh, will misunderstand something or that will maybe avoid the conflicts, the culture misunderstanding, and getting to know the different culture is the first step to yeah, connect the culture and、uh, without you know being so、uh, how to say yeah conflict conflicts. I love I love it when people can you know exchange the culture and maybe connect them. That's what I try to do. Like when I go abroad and I wear kimono, it, maybe back in the my photos, then there's a church, for example,、uh, in Europe, and I see kimono and you know behind the church. That's that's、uh, something I like. <laughs> it's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Well, it's it's such a beautiful contrast, right? It, right. Like, don't you sometimes like if you go into a traditional Japanese shop and everything is Japanese. It's hard to imagine how this thing that I like is going to look outside of this all Japanese shop, and I think the same is if you wear kimono in front of a European church. It's such a nice contrast and such an interesting difference, right?、Beautiful. Right. I don't think many Japanese people have done that. Maybe mainly because kimono is difficult to wear, and also you may not see it. But there are so many accessories you have to bring, and under the kimono itself, you need a juban, which is like underwear for kimono, and it's kind of difficult to bring abroad. So it's not as light. So that's why I also you know you have to know also how to put this on. Otherwise, you know, even if you bring it, you have no one to help you with. Unlike in Japan, there are so many people <laughs> yeah, to help you out. So that's right.、Uh, we've we've talked to a few people who have taught、uh, how to wear kimono. For example, kimono shila. Uh, she's very active teaching her Japanese students how to wear kimono. Right? She's very active in Japan, trying to help kimono culture. Paprika Girl is another. She's in the film and media industry in Japan, and she often wears kimono herself. She, as well as you, has taken some of the vintage kimono from her family and wearing、oh. it. So it has such a wonderful heritage, but also. A, A wonderful sustainability.、Aspect. Right, you can、yeah. wear it generations. When I think about sustainability, I thought the kimono is a perfect example. You can wear it for years and years, years and years. And these kimono that I got are mainly from my parents, my grand grandparents. So we, you know,、uh, take it all, take over these kimonos and wear it again and again. And the kimonos are always like stay very beautifully even after years. And、uh, these are the kimono that、uh, my grand my grandmom was also wearing. Yeah, yeah. So they were very old, but still looked so beautiful. <laughs> It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous,、yeah. and the whole. I've talked to an expert,、uh, Asby Brown, on the Edo Jidai, on the Edo period, and he、uh, talked a lot about how it was such a sustainable traditional culture, right? So if you wear a kimono and of course it's worn out, you can reuse it for something else. Yes, a bag.、Uh, you can make a different kind of dress. And we see that reuse of kimono material now in Japan too. It's wonderful. Yeah, I I'm now into these kimono、uh, accessory kimono made accessories. Like people nowadays just put these old kimono is just in draw drawer. Yeah, so that sometimes like people say, you know, it's it's motaina. You know, it's you don't you shouldn't waste it. So instead, like they bring it or they even like make such. Uh, beautiful、uh, decorations like this, like you can use in the modern times. Or my hair accessory is also from kimono material, and、uh, that way I can also introduce the kimono. But also, you don't waste anything. That's also sustainability, I think. <laughs>、like、today, course, way, modern、course. way. <laughs> there, there is a, a a really talented French、uh, fashion designer called Clementine Sandner, who is based、yeah. in Kyushu, but she worked in Kyoto. For a long time, and she makes gorgeous bags、wow. and uses kimono material and upcycles them into different products. She also has beautiful kimono masks that we did together on a project. Yeah,、ah, there's so many great、cool. ideas. Yeah, yeah. These days, 
like these kimono shops are making the like, masks for kimono, using great materials, for, you know, of kimono. And so that's pretty, also, right? Yeah, great idea. Like very creative. That's our <laughs> new reality. Probably at least one more year, we should be wearing a mask every day, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Very, very much. I think so too. Yes. Now, speaking of Japanese culture and sustainability, I really like this blog that you did about the beauty of blank space in Japan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We 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 love these blank space, and also um, our like culture love to uh, connect. Like, there's no inside or outside for our like philosophy. It's kind of like very difficult to explain but the beauty of it is like yeah sim this simple but yet uh, you, you see the sophisticated tech like, features inside and uh this blank space ma we call it ma that's like a very important for us uh it means so many <laughs> so many like we maybe atmosphere like japanese people atmosphere we call it like air but uh also yeah in many ways also the yeah, about uh, how we speak. Yeah, in the many, many ways, Ma is very important to us. <laughs> and that shows a, a lot about our culture, this garden, for example. Yeah. I, think, I think the absence of too many things helps you focus on something more clearly, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a damn minimalism. Like there's like a, you know, people Japanese person like Marie Kondo for example she's a minimalist uh, for example I think she uh, started to have this idea from Japanese perspective for sure like Japanese people don't like to uh, have so many stuff or uh, buy uh, so many things new things but instead like to use it many times and you know that's why we have a better quality and better to use it longer uh yeah but, that's but Saki, it's still something that a lot of japanese people are also struggling with right like it's usual usual japanese house is not minimal everybody tries to be minimal but you often see the office building and all the boxes against the window There's yeah stuff, right yeah yeah so at the same the time ideal, we are behind it. even yeah. even for japanese people they're trying right trying to be minimalist yeah 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 but still yeah it's it's so difficult indeed yeah <laughs> and we know the idea but we just can't <laughs> yeah. do it in daily lives and yeah yeah but I, I think Marie Kondo, I agree with you. She has inspired so many people to yeah. get rid of things that don't spark joy, right? That yeah. don't make you happy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I agree with her. Like, uh, yeah. it's, Me it's too. waste. Yeah, it's like very motainai idea has a lot to do with it. I think. Yeah. I'm always, always trying. Like yesterday, I did a big spring clean of the house. And one of the big things about spring cleaning is to pass on old clothes that nobody's wearing to the secondhand shop or to try to recycle everything that you can or reuse things you can. But yeah, minimalism is a great goal. It's so difficult. Yeah, it's so difficult, but it's good that we have a disco and she's a great reader <laughs> when it comes to minimalism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She she's so inspiring. <laughs> yeah. um, because we just finished March and in March you were introducing about Hina, the Hina dolls, Hina Matsuri. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, yeah, Hina Matsuri is like a three, uh, March 3rd, we have a doll festival for mainly for uh, girls. That's why we call it even girls festival. Uh, and uh, yeah, there are many dolls uh, that have faces from imperial family. Yeah, on the top, you see this imperial uh, family and under the side, there are other people who are playing the music, uh, shrine music, for example and uh, it came from the idea of the chinese philosophy yeah and uh, but it became like um the those kind of the, the people who were in the imperial family started to play with dolls and uh that became like more common uh, among like normal citizens in edo period in the modern times and this is now the still the yeah it stays like 
this way like very until recently yeah they it's it was only for higher status people but now we decorate like this for yeah uh, daughters granddaughters and uh, my my grandparents uh, got this uh, when i was born and every year she they yeah we decorate it together <laughs> before the uh, this doors festival and uh, interesting miss is like before uh, after the door festival you have to clean up you have to put this back uh, otherwise you can't go go marry you can't go to dry <laughs> so we were so worried about it oh, in a rush <laughs> yeah. one of one of the things that i think is so interesting did you have your own doll set in your house yeah yeah, yeah. A lot of Japanese people do, right? Like kimono, uh, yes. it's very expensive, but then <laughs> you can pass to the next generation, right? So the yeah. kimono dolls, very expensive, but if you take care of them, you can pass them on to your children or grandchildren, right? And then get them yes. out only once a year and then you pack them away very carefully, right? Yes, yes, yes. I remember like these dolls are not like, how to say strong against like anything so we had to wrap it up you know after the door festivals to make sure that it will be not getting you know <laughs> worse how to say yeah. yeah but basically yes we uh, they are very expensive and <laughs> i don't know if you know i can afford but uh, these are the ones that i can get get this for maybe for future children <laughs> Yeah, I think maybe the full set is about from two hundred thousand about for a big set like this. Yeah, I'm not sure about the prices, but my 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 grandma said like it's it's very expensive. She she sees these facial like expressions of the dolls, and she says you know like cheaper ones have have not like beautiful faces, so you have to choose the good ones and yeah. then if you see the beautiful ones and they they are usually expensive same as kimono when i say oh yeah. it's patterns are beautiful then usually they are expensive ones yeah <laughs> more expensive right <laughs> uh, we we had a question about kimono so cool breeze thank you for asking uh what material is the kimono usually made of that's a good question yeah silk yeah basically it's silk but uh many people ask um about like the differences between yukata and kimono and the yukata is like made of cotton that's how you can differentiate i think uh yukata is like worn only in the summer festivals or even like yokan if you stay at yokan then like a pajama so it's very comfy unlike kimono and also it's easier to move i guess silk it's kind of difficult to also you have to take it take care of it very carefully because they are not good with water not waterproof um but cotton is easier to keep and it's easier to uh get because it's the price is very affordable yeah usually so yeah. it's good start <laughs> One, one of the things that I've been so impressed talking to kimono experts like you is yeah. how you don't need to wash the kimono. You need to take care of it, but usually you don't wash it after use, not like normal clothes. So mm. it's actually more sustainable in that way, too, is that you don't need to keep washing. Maybe you, Kata, you would wash after use, yeah. not the yeah. silk kimono, right? Yes. This silk, you, you even you must not uh, wash, but instead you uh, bring it to the this cleaning dry cleaning shop. But uh, I, like you said, we don't do it uh, every time we wear. Often, like after wearing kimono, we just hang it up on the wall, and uh, that's it. <laughs> and that's totally fine to keep it like this way. They just uh, if you sweat, it's not good, so you you dry it. But that's the only maintenance I do, and of course, once in a while, I put, I put bring it to the dry cleaning, and they make it beautiful <laughs> again. Wow. That's how we keep it. Yeah. When I talked to Kimono Sheila, she said uh, she wears kimono almost every day, so she only washes her underclothes. She never washes the kimono, so she has so little washing every week. Yeah. That's so impressive. Yeah, it's eco-friendly, I would say. Yeah, only the underwear. Yeah, 
it, it's it's like a nagajiban. So yes, that's the only thing I also、uh, wash to every every time I wear kimono. So、yeah. it's easy too. <laughs> you don't have to wash it like unlike other clothes. <laughs> yeah, I was really interested、uh, when you were in Germany. You also found a kimono shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This. These、uh, shops, I guess, they were run by a Japanese person, but she was making, like, like we talked before, they make. She made some of these、uh, materials from kimono, and、uh, she sold also clothes,、uh, kimono material. Maybe people who are interested in making something, and then you know、uh, they could use them. And I was very excited to find them because in Germany I didn't think it was as common <laughs> to people interested in kimono. I don't know if you have much people know kimono. I wasn't sure, but、uh, that was a very nice discovery. That you know people were interested. <laughs> yeah, that's so fun to find something from your country, from your culture, when you're traveling abroad, and it's run by a Japanese person who's. Resident there, that must have been so fun.、Uh, I remember I took some students many years ago to New York City, and we were in a very popular Japanese residence area. So there's lots of Japanese restaurants and cafes, and there was even a Japanese convenience store there. Wow!、And、the students were so happy to see, even though. It was only one week away from Japan, but they were so happy to see Japanese products <laughs> and everything. But when I know, yeah. Up, they said, "Oh, but it's too expensive. It's <laughs>、yeah. Three times too much, right?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, right? I'm excited to see the Japanese stuff abroad, but at the same time, I'm, a, I'm, a, you know, surprised at how expensive it can be. Yeah. Abroad, abroad. So it makes you realize if you can get it in Japan, you're lucky because it's it is so much cheaper, right? Yes, it's so cheap here, and it's easier to <laughs> buy them here instead. Yeah, yeah. like also、um, Stasia Matsumoto, who runs In Kimono, is, she's a photographer and kimono stylist in Tokyo.、Um, she was in the series, and she talks about taking a lot from the retro shops or secondhand kimono shops,、mm -hmm. and she she knows how to design them, so she'll make them larger for bigger customers or. She likes to mix match the retro、mm. style and the traditional style together, so you can get some real bargains, right? Second, yeah, second hundred kimonos are the good thing that、uh, you can you can try first. There are like online stores that also sell the second hundred ones, and they are usually remain the good the quality, but yet very cheap and affordable. So if you think like oh kimono are too expensive, then you can get the second hand kimono and enjoy. Also, it's good for eco environment, eco friendly as、yeah. well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I、um, in Kyoto,、well. there is a Camilla Tea Ceremony Company. Ah, I know her. Yes, yes. Do you know her? And she、yeah. wears kimono every day. And she said she has some beautiful tweets. She always shares beautiful photos of kimono or tea ceremony or Kyoto, and she was at an antique market, and she、oh. she often said you can find beautiful kimono at the antique market, but maybe it was too busy even now during coronavirus. We need to try to find more space areas, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. But in think, Hiroshima, yeah, yeah. I saw you went to Miyajima in Hiroshima. Yes, yes. On yes. on Miyajima Island, a lot of people wear kimono when they visit the island. Yes.、And、if you go to Daishoin Temple, they often have the secondhand kimono for sale, and only one thousand yen, only ten dollars. It's so cheap. Oh wow! Do you、that's、have to、amazing. find it next time? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I will. I, I I'm I'm fan of the、uh, second hand like kimono shops. I like to support these、uh, businesses. Of course, they're, they're、oh, good we and wanna, we want to、yeah. support them so they can survive and keep going. Yeah. So we need to we want to reuse and and、yeah. enjoy wearing for ourselves too, right? I think I'm happy about these modern times.、Uh, young generations are also interested in kimono, but from Taisho Roma, which is like a, a after Meiji period, there was like a very big fashion trend came in, and there are very unique patterns from this era. And these are now antique kimonos, and the younger generations who are 
who are into fashion uh, like to in, in, like introduce this you know, antique kimono, Roma, Taisho Roma, because they look so fashionable. Uh, you can use it with modern clothes as well. And that's, that's also cool that uh, people are also enjoying kimono today, but in uh, different ways. Yeah. Now, I noticed in your Japanese lessons or online, you were talking about ikigai. Can you explain ah. ikigai? <laughs> yeah, ikigai, it's, uh, it's something um, I, I wrote a while ago before, about. But generally, like Japanese people uh, tend to have this uh, ikigai as a motivation for life. And it's, it's a, such a deep question when someone asks you, so what's your ikigai? Because like people usually don't live every day thinking like, oh, what's the meaning of my life? Uh, but the, that's the fact that, you know, you, we have this word makes me think like, oh, I, I should think about <laughs> a lot about my life, what I'm doing now. And, uh, it's it's a good concept to yeah i don't know it's it's difficult to explain <laughs> it is it is difficult but it's it is like you said in your post um if you don't think about ikigai if you don't think about your reason to get up uh every day and to have kind of an aim or focus uh even if it's to just connect or share your culture on live right like you're doing yeah yeah it doesn't have to be something big it can be something you are passionate about or if you help someone out that can be your ikigai so even though the ikigai the concept can be a like, big philosophy you can set like uh, yeah. small stuff like from e everyday life and yeah. uh, i think that like, like i think my ikigai would be like sharing the japanese culture to the world <laughs> for sure i i see that you have a passion for kimono and for also sharing japanese culture sharing your love of kimono with other people online i think that that is definitely your ikigai and for me talking to wonderful people like you yeah. my ikigai and during coronavirus it's wonderful to have some kind of focus or some kind of aim which helps other people but also yeah. makes you feel good right yes 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 i agree um i love that you also invite people like this and help us to share the perspectives and you know different ideas and uh, th these are the things that i love about also live streaming you can interact people with people live and also <laughs> talk with other people from different culture different part of the world yes yeah. That is that is a silver lining of coronavirus. Yeah, it yeah, moved, yeah. Moved us online, but it actually helps us to network with a much wider audience than we were before. Sometimes, right? Yes. Yeah. Online. Online. It's it's amazing. You, there's no go like border borders uh, as long as we are connected on online somewhere on social medias and without these social medias I wouldn't have known these so many friends and that's that's so cool that uh, being here in Japan I got to know a lot of people from different world uh, that I've never been to and I uh, hope to visit yeah, these every area <laughs> from my friends they, they are from different yeah countries oh we have some good questions uh Heavenly Dew says has social media helped propel your mission or has it hurt in any way? Please explain. Uh, yeah, I mean, there are moments where I feel like, mm, like so much, so much negativity on social medias, uh, instead of focusing on the good parts, you know, like I see, thankfully, I see a lot of people who are very supportive about what I do, but I also wrote, uh, some articles, for example, about, uh, um hiroshima like atomic bombs because my uh part of my family is, fr is from hiroshima and also my dad spent uh his childhood in hiroshima so i have some connections and i have a lot lo loved with hiroshima so i'm passionate about it and i wrote an article about it but of course people think like oh that's too offensive so uh but i didn't want to hurt anyone 
And whenever I write an article, I try to write in a respectful way. But also there are people who find it maybe offensive or who take it wrong. And uh, I, I get some negative comments or messages. And that's why I feel like, mm, like so difficult to be online. And maybe I will take a break from it because I don't want to yeah, uh, get uh, affected by the negativity. Yeah. It's so hard. And, yeah. you know, people often say, well, don't be political. Well, if yeah. you don't say anything, you're being political as well. You know, so if you feel you want to share something and hopefully you have a supportive community online that people, enough people will support you and less people will say something. Yeah, too. yeah. I think over years on Periscope, I've got like negative people, but also I built like a very nice, positive, supportive community. And uh, I get less negative uh, comments or messages nowadays and more positives. So that's why I can keep going. And people, even when I feel down, like people are very, how to say, so positive about what I do and encourage me. And that's how I kept going. and. Usually, like I, I get back to this online community and say, like, "Hi, hey guys," you know, <laughs> and it's yeah. nice. Yeah, well, that's that's such a wonderful thing about uh, being on Haps, I think, and being on Twitter. And oh, I mean, some people complain about Twitter, but if somebody's mean to you, you can block them. Yeah, you can ignore them. You can mute them. <laughs> and if someone supports you, usually, if you're honest they will really support you more right yes and they know they know me well enough to understand my intention so people who don't know me usually and they the ones that attack me so i, I like you say i don't just pay attention to them i ignore and block and i, I just think like oh they're just trolling and i think over years i get better at these dealing with this situation yeah well, I respect you and I appreciate your courage because doing my live stream interviews every day, I often ask Japanese women, especially, I ask loads of people, foreigners, <laughs> Japanese men and women, and too often it is the Japanese women who say no thank you because doing live is scary. <laughs> They, they are worried about the negative comment. And I always say, you know, don't worry. It's a really nice, supportive group. Please don't worry. So thank you so much for joining and for being strong and for live streaming and challenging that because I think it is really daunting. Yeah, I mean, like there are, you see, there are less people, Japanese people who speak up online, that Japanese people, uh, I guess we are shy, but also we are scared of this negativity. And I also have this uh, fear or anxiety, but I'm really grateful for my friends who really cheer me up. Really, they, they are the reason why I do still go live and I share the culture and I keep doing what I do, even if sometimes I feel like, oh, like there's so much negativity. Uh, I keep, you know, doing this anyways because of my good friends who share the, you know, who love, show me the love and support and I want to give them back something. <laughs> That's wonderful. Uh, let's, we have a, about seven more minutes uh, we're going to talk. And yep. I would love for you to introduce some of the Japanese language that you teach online and in your classes. Uh, you were talking about now in English, we often say sakura snow. Now is the time when the sakura is falling from the trees. It's blowing in the wind. And you were teaching some Japanese for talking about the different kinds of sakura condition can you tell us yeah i think there are so many words related to even the sakura itself but on my instagram i said the uh, sakura hubuki hubuki is like a snowstorm but we kind of think that oh this looks like a snow but with sakura so basically yeah sakura hubuki is like how the petals are you know falling down and i think yeah, it can be a negative, but sakura hubuki itself is not a negative word at all. We think like, oh, how beautiful this is. Like, 
this nature itself it's uh just changing the seasons and even though like sakura is falling down and that means like you know you can't see sakura and you have to wait another year but uh, that's also a beauty of sakura so sakura hubuki is also one of my favorite words <laughs> I love it. I adore yeah. this time of year. In fact, I might prefer when it's falling. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's like romantic and yeah. you feel so special. You're walking through the park and your walkway is covered in cherry blossom petals. It feels so special, right? Yeah, yeah. It's when the petals are like gather on the ground like so pink over the, all over the places that's also a beautiful moment and yeah sakura usually uh, very beautiful in full bloom but also when they fall down that's also beautiful so i enjoy it really like from the beginning to the end yes yeah fantastic i love it yeah. um, another another thing i wanted to talk about i you love tenugui ah yeah introduce tenugui which is such a wonderful sustainable, yeah, sustainable culture yeah. aspect <laughs> you, you you find the good stuff about sustainability yeah yeah tenugui it's these days like tenugui is very beautiful so beautiful that we can't use in a daily life i don't want to make it dirty or anything but instead i hang it on the wall or something but in the past people use tenugui in many different ways even for how to say when they get injured then they rip this uh, off uh, you know the edge of it and you know pull it on the on the like injured areas and uh, that's that's a tenugui also uh many like japanese towels so usually for towels we use it again and again uh, as well but it's like a well, beautiful decoration it's nowadays really, it's really useful right now to have yeah. tenugui. and it's such a wonderful thing when you travel uh yeah. to buy different tenugui like this one maybe from kyoto is gorgeous yeah um but if you buy from different areas that you visit around japan you can use them in different ways a lot of people after washing hands they would dry their hands with tenugui yes, yes if it's yes. hot and you're sweaty you would put it over your head yeah 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 right yeah. away right <laughs> yeah 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 that's a good that, that's a good part about tenugui there are so many different ways you can use with yes it's useful um yeah I okay. love the Japanese uh, tenugui, like the designs as well. Like there's so many designs that I can't choose. Just so many beautiful it's gorgeous. Stuff. <laughs> now, I would suggest just make sure, check the label and make sure it's made in Japan. Yeah. If possible, made in Okayama or made in the area that you're visiting. <laughs> That's the best one. <laughs> yeah, please support like local businesses, <laughs> Japanese Absolutely. local businesses. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Kelly, thank you for the award. Thank you. Appreciate thank that. You. Thank you, Don. I appreciate that. So only a few more minutes. I, I found this bus cafe that you went to. I love ah. it. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, yeah. It's like a, a like a bus, but from London, like old London bus. They import it uh, from London, I'd say, and they make it now cafe. Inside is a cafe, but outside it's like still the London bus that you see. But it's so nice that you see the all rice field and there's a London bus <laughs> inside of this rice field. <laughs> It's like a combination, good combination of the uh, British culture and the Japanese culture. Where, where was that? It's in Okayama. It's not. Uh, it's not far from the center of Okayama city, actually. Yes, you can drive around uh, twenty minutes or so from the city center. You can go there, and uh, it's it's a very nice place, and uh, people are going there to take photos for instagram <laughs> it's not so nice to yeah. Yeah, yeah there's there's one place in hiroshima outside the city and it's a ramen bus so ah. same, same idea they have a double decker london bus and they renovated it into a ramen shop that's cool um, yeah yeah there's there's old buses i see everywhere and they're really cool so <laughs> i love this idea you know if you've got an old bus why not run a coffee shop out of it or yeah okay? That's an amazing idea. Like I, I, I think people should do more. <laughs> more people should do that. Like, like using the old buses instead of you know throwing it away. You can reuse it again, like as a sustainability. Definitely. 
<laughs> yeah. okay. uh, we just have another minute, but I wanted to show that you also explore some beautiful old back street areas in Okayama. Okayama has Kurashiki and some beautiful old classic towns, which you introduced. Maybe we can meet there someday because I love wandering those streets too. Yeah, sure, for sure. I can show you around. Yes, there are so many. Yeah, Kurashiki began street is like the one that I think many people go also. Uh, that's from uh, many long years ago. Yeah, we keep this tradition, traditional houses, traditional architecture, and you still see them today. And they also use for many films, uh, samurai films or samurai uh, drama series and Kuraski. I see often on the TV as well today. Yeah, but you know, on busy days, like I went to Kuraski during coronavirus and it was nice because it was so empty. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. We really, we have so many classic areas, but during coronavirus, when there's less visitors, is a nice chance to visit the most famous ones because usually I avoid them. Yeah, it's too crowded, even before coronavirus, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Fresh is very popular, so yeah, it's usually crowded. But like, like you say, now it's good timing to visit there. Like less people, you can enjoy the scenery in a quiet <laughs> atmosphere. Yeah. So maybe we can visit sometime this year before the tourism sure. sports coming back and yeah. we can we can leisurely wander around together. Maybe in For sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love that it. idea. Let's yeah. Well, Saki, that's our hour. Thank you so much for joining and sharing Thank your you. love and good Thank luck you, with Bona. your Japanese language teaching. I think you're doing such a great service for Japan and uh, people want to learn about Japan, but also the language. Thank you so much for having me. I uh, appreciate. I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, let's also, let's do it again. Uh, yeah. I think there's yeah, a lot yeah, yeah. Of stuff we didn't cover, and maybe yeah, so many stuff we can do a live about. from Okayama together. That would be fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like to talk about Okayama too because uh, it's a beautiful place, but people don't know much about so. Yeah, <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah. Well, thank you everybody for joining today and uh, all your great comments and the awards. We really appreciate. We will be sharing the awards. Don't worry about that. And uh, follow Saki on her HAPS channel or her blog or Twitter or Instagram or Facebook, right? Right, right. Yeah, you can go from my profile. All of the links are available, but also you can go to my website <laughs> as well. So feel free to follow me there. I'd be happy to see you on my broadcast. Yeah. And uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Keep up the good work. You're doing a great job. Thank you thank so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time and the interview. It was amazing. <laughs> good. Well, awesome. Yeah. We'll have to do it again sometime. Yeah, thank sure. Everyone, have a great thank day. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Appreciate that. Bye. Bye.